In this session, we will be looking at monitoring and evaluation. The logical framework is the basis for monitoring and evaluating the project or programme. First, let's discuss the difference between monitoring and evaluation. Monitoring is an ongoing process of reviewing performance, whereas an evaluation assesses what has been achieved at the outcome, purpose level, and is often used to learn lessons for future projects. So the features of monitoring. Monitoring is carried out routinely, Frequency can be quarterly, six monthly, and it's often an internal process. However, annually it may often be external. It asks the question, are the activities achieving the outputs? If not, why not? And what do you need to do to ensure outputs are being achieved? Monitoring allows an opportunity to reflect on what is working, but also to reflect on what needs to be done to improve performance. Features of evaluation are such, usually they are external, so they can be objective. Frequency is usually a much longer time horizon, over five years or even ten years. The difference is it evaluates what has been achieved at outcome, purpose level and impact. It does not usually concern, it is not usually concerned by lower levels. It looks at efficiency and effectiveness. And now in DFID, it would look at this through the value for money lens. It takes us as an opportunity to learn lessons about what's happened and why to inform new projects, policy and practice. And this is particularly important for any new project design. It identifies strengths and weaknesses. And we recommend that you look at the OSA template as it is a very useful guide. Now, most development partners will request an M&E plan at the beginning of the project. So what is an M&E plan? The M&E plan will state how you will monitor your progress against the log frame over the lifetime of the project and how you'll evaluate the project at the end. It will state how and when you will carry out the routine monitoring through team meetings and field visits and it will define the evaluation strategy. It will now include value for money indicators if you're doing this for DFID. The inception period is the time to get this right. It is too late to define an M&E plan at the end of a project. An M&E plan must be clear and unambiguous. The problems that can emerge are that outputs are vague, the outputs of the log frame are vague and not well defined and therefore difficult to measure. Your indicators are not smart. The proposed methodologies, the baseline and surveys, are not consistent and comparable. So you're not comparing apple with apple, but you're comparing apples with oranges and therefore you can make no comparison and therefore it invalidates your evaluation process. There are quite a lot of international reports that bring together evaluation. For example, UNAIDS brings together issues on HIV, UNFPA on family planning. National surveys in country, look at the, such as the Demographic Health Survey, also look at goal and outcome level. In many countries you have a service provision assessment and this will focus at lower level and output service delivery issues that you could evaluate. At community level, they tend to be participatory, but they'll have focus group discussions, mapping of food production. But be very careful when you're carrying out this community evaluations not to raise expectations. The other issue is that our evaluations can be expensive, so we need to be absolutely clear about the objectives and the value added of carrying out your own evaluations rather than using those that already exist, such as the Demographic Health Survey or surveys from other international organisations. Annual reviews review performance against the log frame, asking whether outputs have been achieved and whether the outputs are likely or not to achieve the outcome. The annual review can be internal or external. A project with a large budget will generally have an annual external review. However, an alternative approach 
is that the project team can write up the review, give their own view of performance against the log frame, and then this can be assessed by an external consultant or team of consultants. This provides a good balance of knowledge, local understanding and objectivity. DFID has a scoring system and each donor has different ones. So the DFID one currently looks at a scoring, as you can see on the screen, with A star star, which states that the output has substantially exceeded expectations. You go down, moderately exceeded expectations, and A met expectations. After A, you go into moderately met expectations and did not meet expectations. And if you score a B or a C, you're likely to be getting into trouble and you could even be put on a performance improvement plan. One of the risks, of, to me, of the new scoring is a tendency to focus on easier targets, to be certain to achieve an A, because if you don't achieve an A, then you are likely to be called a non-performing project. And it has a risk, really, of... Um, not looking at the broader issues in developing a programme. OSAID, by, by contrast, um, uses the log frame, but uses traffic lights. It looks at green, the objective will be fully achieved within the timeline, amber partially, and red, the objective will not be met. It also looks at what factors have affected progress, whether the theory of change is relevant, and likes to calculate direct contributions made by the Australian government. The next type of um, evaluation is called the project completion review. And as it would suggest, it's the end of a project. And this now looks at whether the outputs have been achieved, but also whether the outputs will achieve the outcome and contribute to the impact. At this stage, they will say whether they believe the outcome has been achieved or not, and this will be scored using the scoring that I mentioned, A2 star, A star and A. In conclusion, all projects and programmes are monitored regularly, with formal reviews taking place annually and evaluations at the end of the project.